The answer is no. If someone pulled 400 pounds on the ISO chain at the lowest length for the deadlift, that does not mean that they can go in the weight room and pull 400 pounds off the ground for a one rep max. I've said this before, I'll keep saying it, I'm gonna still keep getting these comments saying, okay, then go do that in the weight room then, bro. You're not listening. So for those specific comments, here is a video for you. Okay, condescending tone aside, <laughs> let's get into some science. The force velocity curve is the reason why these people are not going to be able to go in the weight room and pick that weight up. First off, let's go over what it is. The force velocity curve is a graphical representation of the relationship between the force produced by a muscle and the velocity at which that force is produced. In general, as the velocity of movement increases, the amount of force that can be produced decreases. Isometric training involves holding a muscle or pushing against an immovable object or pulling against an immovable object in a stationary position while applying force rather than moving through a range of motion. During isometric training, the muscle remains at a constant length. So the velocity of movement is zero. This means that isometric training falls on the vertical axis of the force velocity curve, the highest point of it, where velocity is zero. At this point on the curve, the muscle is able to produce maximal force. That's why you see people on the ISO chain in these little YouTube shorts, it looks like they're gonna blow a freaking blood vessel, though they won't, okay? With, with proper form at least, okay? Though they won't, it's very taxing for the six seconds, okay? And if you don't know why uh, we hit the ISO chain for six seconds, um, here's a link right here. Go ahead and check that out. I explained the reasoning behind the six second contraction, okay? But this is why isometric training is often used to increase strength and improve muscle function, okay? However, it's important to note that the force velocity curve is not a static concept. The relationship between force and velocity can change depending on various factors like muscle fatigue, muscle length, and the level of activation of the muscle. So for those three, let's just break that down real quick. So if somebody's at 100%, you know, they're, they're fresh out of bed, you know, their muscle fatigue is zero. If somebody like maybe had, you know, like 30 minutes of just moving around and maybe picking up some objects and, and moving them around a little bit, their muscle fatigue is a little lower than that. They're not at 100%. Okay, so if they both did the same thing, if they both perform the same movement, one might be a little less because there's muscle fatigue involved. I think that makes um, common sense, but sometimes it's important to break it down because we might see somebody on the channel in the future or in a future um, ISO chain short and it's just like, well, what the heck? It looked like that person was able to generate more when in fact it, it might've been the exact opposite because we don't know what they did before the video. Muscle length is different and you know, sometimes that's height. Sometimes it isn't, sometimes that is just genetics. Some people have longer arms, longer legs than others, longer torso than others, and that will play a factor, okay? The level of activation of the muscle, if we're half-assing it, or if we're going all in. You know, some people um, on the chain, you know, I've told them, hey, go all in. I remember doing an event at a local park the first year I got the ISO chain, and you could tell some people were like, kind of, I don't know, I guess they didn't want to like look a certain way. So they kind of held back and th the number reflected that because the number is accurate. Okay, so when we go all in, that is the maximum amount of force that we're able to generate there, okay? So the level of activation of the muscle, if we're going 50%, you're gonna get a 50% number. If we're going 100%, we're gonna get a 100% number for that person, does that make sense? Overall, the force velocity curve is a useful tool for understanding the relationship between force and velocity in muscle function, okay? And isometric training can be an effective way to improve strength and muscle function by training at the point on the curve where maximal force can be produced. And we are only ever going to get that if we are exerting maximal force with no movement. So even doing a one rep max, okay? You've seen people on YouTube that just like, they're going all in or like, you know, vibrating, spitting up vomit as they get that one rep and then they pass out or, you know, hopefully they don't pass out, okay? But they're close to the top end of the force velocity curve. By the way, 
We showed a, a, a image of the force velocity curve. Here is what the force velocity curve looks like. Okay, so when we're doing these overcoming isometric six second contractions on the ISO chain, we are right here at the very top of the force velocity curve. One rep maxes are a little lower on the force velocity curve, but only a little bit. It's still near the highest point. It's near the highest point, but because we're able to move said object, it can't be considered the highest point of force because there's movement involved. It's only when we take that movement away, like we had talked about, that's where the highest level of force is produced. Am I making sense here? And just to drive this home, here's what the opposite of this looks like, where we are on the lowest part of the force velocity curve. This is where you start getting crazy movements like Bruce and that was not really that fast because I just, I'm not that quick yet, all right? Well, I need to do more OI training, okay? But Bruce Lee, just take a look at how freaking quick he is. He's very quick, okay? The lowest point on the force velocity curve is the point at which the highest velocity of movement is achieved. At this point, the muscle is able to produce the least amount of force. Does that make sense? So we are getting the least amount of resistance against that muscle. So when Bruce Lee one inch punched and sent that person skidding across that auditorium floor or for example someone else that could be considered lightning quick right there is very little stopping that object except maybe air okay so in that scenario we are on the lowest point of the force velocity curve we're going to see the quickest movement because there's nothing stopping you in fitness training this point on the curve may be relevant in activities that involve high velocity movement like sprinting or jumping in these activities the muscle needs to produce a large amount of force in a very short period of time in order to achieve the high velocity of movement so for example, when a sprinter takes off from the starting block, they need to produce a large amount of force in a short period of time in order to achieve that high velocity necessary to start the race. The muscle will be working at the lowest point on the force velocity curve in order to produce the necessary force for this movement. It's important to note that the position of the lowest point on the force velocity curve can vary depending on various factors like muscle fatigue, muscle length, and the level of activation of muscle, just like at the highest point. Okay, so if somebody's tired, even though there's not a lot of resistance stopping you, they're not going to be able to produce peak force because they're not at 100%. Make sense, guys? All right, but what are your thoughts? Does this make more sense now? Do we now see why? And I know like long time No Limit Squad subscribers are just like, well, duh, of course this made sense. We knew back then. This is for the newer people that kept saying that. So now we all know, now we're on the same page. So now for us, when we see somebody else post on these uh, shorts or any of the, our future videos, we can all come and swoop down on them respectfully and tell them, watch this video. All right, guys, did you find value in this? Isn't this so cool? If you found value, be sure to drop a like, go ahead and comment. If you're not yet part of the squad, hit that subscribe button. Come join that squad with us. We'll see you next video. Peace.